Fuck yes. Fuck yes, everything's working. Okay. Um, I know there's one more thing. I know there's one more thing. But, but uh, I've got I've got a lot of computers over here. Sometime I'll show you. <laughs> okay, for sure, for sure. Well, you just have to set this up, and then we're we should be good to rock and roll. Okay. Oh yeah. Um. So while while I'm trying to sort out this whole thing. Um, yeah. What's up? I, I noticed you have some writing on yourself, like small introductions, little blurbs. What's your favorite one that you've got written up? Um, I actually have not had that many like introductions for for myself. Um, whenever I would have like a blurb, it would just be like you know, Jason Wu, freelander MC, Asian American rapper, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you've also you've also like taken this uh, identity of being nerdy Asian kid and run it yeah. with it too. That's, I mean, that is at the end of the day, that is like clickbait. That's just the kind of clickbait thing that I've like <laughs> I've experimented around with it. Right. But then it it turns to I don't know. It just kind of like became its own like identity for me as well. Got gotcha. you. Jesus, dude, my computer yeah. is fucking choking so hard right now. Okay, minimize this. I so what I did is I took I took some notes while listening through your debut album, Dragon of the West. Yeah. Just on a track by track basis and jotted down stuff that you talked about. And okay. there's quite a bit. It's it's packed. Right. Well, thank you for listening to the whole album. I think it's what's my like fourth or fifth playthrough it today. Oh wow! Yeah, I yeah that's mean, awesome. If you know, I think it it deserves a proper listen. So I sat down today hey. and actually took notes. <laughs> Fuck, dude! Jesus Christ! Technology is <sighs> okay. Let's uh, try this. Yeah, I, like every time I try to set up for Twitch, it's always just a giant mess. Uh... Once you get it rolling, it's okay. It's just right. that, like, uh, you know, I should have done this earlier. Right. But, but I just, yeah, I, sometimes I don't use my time to the fullest, you know? <laughs> Fuck. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Because the, the video on my side is like kind of... Is, is it dying? Out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, right. I'm using this uh, 2017 MacBook base model. Oh, okay. So it's kind of, you know, it's not a, not a powerhouse and I tend to push it pretty hard. Like I'm oh, constantly okay. keeping it running as hard as it can go. So right, right now I'm just trying to like ditch all of the background shit and mm -hmm. get it so that it will it will actually cooperate right uh, yeah because i don't want it to you know i don't want your feed to lag just like i don't want my shit to get all right that's okay right. okay let me minimize this real quick and see what happens and it should be was your is the machine that you're at right now hardwired to your network? Uh, you mean my computer? Yeah. Well, right now I'm using my iPad to. Uh, yeah, I know for Discord. Yeah. But the oh, yeah. the other machine. Oh uh, yeah, it's yeah it's wired to my network. So if I were to use it, it would definitely be a much more stable connection. It's just that I don't have my mic or uh, webcam set up. Gotcha. Yeah. 
Fair. Um, okay, so I think I can do this. MacBook. All right. Hello, hello. Okay. Last one. OBS on this end. Hey, while you were broadcasting on Twitch, what all were you streaming? Oh, sorry? While you were broadcasting on Twitch, what all were you streaming? Uh, I tried to do, like, um, I tried to do some beat making, just like live beat making, and also dabbled with, like, Hearthstone streaming as well. But, yeah, I just, I just um, didn't really have time for that, as much time for that anymore, so. Right. Kind of stuff, yeah. And a lot of the time, my internet is just not stable to, like, to stream high quality. I see. Yeah. The beat making makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably like dabble with it uh, back again in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just not right now. Right. Yeah, one time's right. Dude. How long have you been doing on Twitch? Um, shoot, it's been a while. Mm. Let me, let me see. It's been at least, at least two years. Right. And I'm just a little guy. Mm. I'm a little guy, but I have a, uh, I have a big heart, you know. Mm. I began with video games. And then nice. I took a break. I took a break from video games. And when I came back, I realized that nobody that used to watch me for video games wanted to hang out anymore because I wasn't helping them in their video games. <laughs> you mean like you were uh, like the stuff you were streaming on on Twitch just wasn't like helping them? Or well, I just I took a entirely like I used to just play Destiny, and there was this PvP event in Destiny. That people would want help with. They'd, they'd want me to try to help run them through it. And when I came back to broadcasting, I picked it up again with just uh, lifting at my home gym. <clears throat> just workout streams. And okay. some, a couple of people came by and were like, whoa, this is new. I did not expect this. But the vast majority of them never showed up again. So oh. it was as if I never started the thing at all. Um, right. I, uh, just because I'm personally quite curious. I, I haven't really gotten the story straight. You know, uh, February, February 2015 is when I first started streaming video games. Oh, nice. So that was like three, almost, yeah, three years ago. Yeah, almost four years at this point. Right, right. Yeah. So I've got some hours in it, but it's whatever. What made you wanna, uh, or like, when did when did you switch to the more like talk show, or like live chat type streaming? That was okay. I went like, like pretty much showing nothing but live stream, just myself at home. About this time last year, or maybe a month before, mm. so November. Mm -hmm. Yeah, November twenty seventeen or mm. so. Okay. And it's uh, it's been fun. Fuck, man, this computer. Uh, one of these days, I need to get a better an actual machine. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Um, you said it was a 2017 MacBook. Yeah, yeah, it's the base model. Okay. So it's like it's literally their cheapest machine. Right. How much? How much was it? Uh, I got it as a refurb for eight hundred fifty bucks. Okay. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead out of everything and then keep my fingers crossed because this is this is madness. Disable. Quit this. Just quit. There we go. Come on. <laughs> You're, you're trying to put my uh, video feed on, on your stream right now, right? Yeah, yeah, so what I'm trying to do is get the computer to cooperate enough to the point where OBS will pop open and it can smoothly render back 
video from from the webcam from Discord right. and just pipe it over to my other machine. Like I'm broadcasting out of uh, oh, oh my god, I'm broadcasting from a separate machine from my my work laptop. Lord, Lord God Almighty. Okay, it's gonna get smart. No more patience for this shit. Okay, one, two. Uh, let's see what's occupying CPU time. Nothing, it won't even tell me. This piece of garbage. Jesus Christ, it's choking so hard right now. Dude, I, okay, if it's if it can't handle this, then I'm just gonna give up. And, okay. and save video for one day when I have an actual machine. This is kind of pathetic. Yeah. <laughs> Stream another day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll have to use a different machine to host the call. This is bad. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um, I tried. I tried. Sorry. smart about this shit. I'm going to record record the video and and then I'll, I'll, I'll get trick with it later. I'll try to edit it together into like a two hour. Like on the stream or? No, no, not live. Not at live time. This machine simply doesn't, oh, okay. it doesn't have enough power to handle that shit. Oh, okay. I see. But I might be able to just record it separately and like hold on to that for posterity. Right. Okay. So I think this will I think this will fly. T S indistinguishable large following sounds fuck. Okay. Recording with this will require extra so stop. Just stop. Okay, never mind. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Right now, you're the only one that can see the video feed of me, right? It's it's unfortunate. Uh, what I could do is any number of things, but like in the future, I've got to do this better. I've got to get better each time I do this shit. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not a big deal if we can't do it tonight. Like we could always uh, work on it another day for the video for the video feed. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so just looking around in the room. Okay. Uh, the quick introduction. We're talking now with Freeloader MC, who's a Chinese American mm -hmm. rapper. Yep. Uh, recently graduated from college. Yep, San Francisco State University, class of 2018. Congratulations on that note, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Of course, cost me nothing. So, <laughs> you, you released your debut album, uh, Dragon of the West, mm -hmm. and it's been now yes. roughly nine months. Uh, yeah, I... I believe I released it on March 22nd. But give me a second, let me get some headphones on actually. Oh, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right, awesome. Yeah, uh, you were saying? Yeah, just, just curious about how long it's been since you released it. It's roughly nine months. Yeah, about, yeah, roughly nine months. No, I, I admit I have no idea how I came across it. I think it could have been Reddit. But interesting. I hmm, I would not expect anyone to read it to yeah, my album up actually. And there's certain circles, I suppose, where somebody somewhere somehow shared your name and I just had it like on a note somewhere. And uh -huh. the other day I was looking around uh, while packing my bags to come back here as a war. And I saw a right. okay, freeloader MC, let me see what this guy's about. Right. 
<laughs> and I started listening to it. The school's Wi-Fi was shit, but I was able uh -huh. to get through like the first couple of tracks and I thought, okay, this is worth, worth investigating a little further. Mm -hmm. So I'm personally quite excited that you had, you were able to make time to chat and share a bit. Yeah, of course, of course. Any, like anyone who, anyone who like takes the time to like listen to like what I have to say and like on, on my music, I would gladly take time out to, to like speak with them. I genuinely appreciate it, man. Yeah, of course, of course. So, oh, as I told you earlier, I took notes as I was listening through the album this time. Mm -hmm. And we'll go track by tr track by track. Yes. Starts with the introduction where you talked about being a little foreign boy in America and asking yeah. what you were after. Money, power, happiness. Right. Mm -hmm. And now in the track you say, I just want to be a dragon, but what, what does this really mean to you? Um, to me, when, when, I wrote that, when I wrote that line, specifically that line, I want to be a dragon, um, I was looking back to like when I was like six years old, and that was exactly what I wanted to do. I, I, like, I like, you know, saw a bunch of cartoons about dragons and stuff, and I was like, oh, it would be sick if I was a dragon. So that line in particular doesn't really have a super significant meaning other than when I was six years old, I wanted to be a dragon. They're pretty badass. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but, yeah, like to, um, but as I thought of that lyric and how it blends together with the rest of the album, it is kind of like a fire-breathing monster, and that is exactly what I want to be whenever I'm, whenever I'm spitting lyrics. Yeah. 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 In fact, Dragonfire was, uh, I'm skipping ahead here <laughs> quite deep, but Dragonfire, I really, really enjoyed. Like it's oh, got thank this you, thank you. good energy to it. Thank and you. In fact, it's, it's a perfect segue off this intro because again, in this one, you talk about how your parents brought you to America and you came from yeah, China to I the was... States. Oh, sorry. China to the States. Yeah. I came to the United States when I was three. Three years old. Um, for yeah. for people who know China, what province did you come from? I came from uh, Canton. It's a small it's a small city, um, two hours away from Hong Kong to the south. Gotcha, Guangdong. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now further in Dragonfire, you talked about this uh, this guy of you Asian persuasion pissing off the clan of Aryans. Yeah, uh, <laughs> pissing off the clan of Aryans. Yeah. <laughs> um. I guess we can keep going on or just jump around. Fuck it. Instead of going okay, track by yeah. track. Okay, pissing off the clan of Aryans. Now, in the sun, 29 Sunset, you also talked about this one white kid. Yeah. One that used to call you a faggot. Oh, yeah. I mean, he wasn't the only one. It was, it was just... Uh, back, in the, back in, like, I, like 10 years ago, you know, when before, like, before the word faggot was deemed, like, really politically incorrect... Faggot was probably the most thrown around insult, right. like like a, a middle school or a high school would would say to each other. So that was just like the most. Out of all the insults I've ever gotten in my life, faggot was probably number one. Just as far as frequency, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. Louis C.K. has a good bit on this faggot mm. and how everything has gone uh, PC in this right. this era. I was curious, did you ever do anything to that one white kid? Um, I remember, I remember once we like, we didn't, we didn't throw fists in the locker room, but like we had, we were like nose to nose and I spit on his jacket because he was, he was just like pissing me off so much that day. Damn. He, he yeah. just, he didn't do anything back? He didn't retaliate? No, nah, he didn't. That's surprising. I, there, it was because teachers were, were like about like it was in like the locker room we were like changing to uh, I think it was like right after PE and teachers were gonna like come in to like tell us all to get out the locker room so I think that's why we didn't actually fight gotcha yeah I can imagine the adrenaline though oh yeah no doubt like half of me was like scared shitless I was like oh my god am I gonna get beat up and my other half was just like pound you to the ground right <laughs> Did you watch any of those kung fu movies growing up? Not as much as you would think. Like I would. I, I, 
uh, like um, the rem- the memories I have of that would be like when like when I was sick at home and not, and my uncle or grandparents would play those movies and I would just like watch them watch it with them while I was like lying in, lying on the sofa. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, my own parents. They well, my mother. She never gave us sick days. She'd be like, "Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're walking. If you can get out of bed, you're going to school." Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. My parents, my parents were like that for the most part too. But it, it, but this was like when I was like really, really like throwing up on the floors, so kind of sick. <laughs> right. Yeah. But if it's like a common cold or like a cough, you're only like, "No, nah, go to school." Yeah, you get over it. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so you talked about your grandparents, and in fact, there's one track called Grandma. Mm-hmm. How she used to pick you up from school. Yeah. Um, dim sum. Yep. Just all childhood memories, because uh, when, I, when I was younger, my par- both of my parents worked. Mm. So it was my grandparents uh, who were the ones who were taking care of me most of the time. Mostly my grandma. Uh, my grandpa was working as well, so it was mostly my grandma who like took me up from school and like took me to all these other places before before like she brought me back home. And this to be clear, this is your nine nine, not white boy, right? Uh prep. <laughs> Remind me again. Nine nine. Nine is on the father's side. Oh it's it's on my father's side, yeah. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to be sure that I heard it right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a that was an embarrassing lack of knowledge on my part. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. You, in fact, you talked about it. your Chinese getting worse every single day because right, what, yeah. you know here in America we operate in English. Yeah, yeah, that yeah that was something. Um, that was some, that was like a theme I tried to get across throughout like the album that like even though I am like Chinese, I don't I forgot like almost every single week of Chinese I know. Even on the album cover, I tried to make this a point on the album cover too because right. the translation of those Chinese letters on my album cover is actually not the correct like translation. There was one character it's, that I, I wasn't too sure about. Oh yeah, if, um, if you translate each letter, each character individually, then sure, it, direct, it, it translates to Dragon of the West. But we all know that's not how like the Chinese language uh, structure is, is is actually like. So to an actual Chinese person reading it, it makes no sense at all. Ah, I see. Yeah. So yeah, that was actually a like I when I was making the mock-up album cover, that was like just something I like. I just went on Google Translate to put it there just to see what it looks like. But then I thought to myself, you know what? Like, I'm I don't want to front like. Like as if I actually know that much Chinese when really I don't. So I'm just gonna yeah. So I'm just gonna put this wrong title just to like tell actual speaking Chinese people that my Chinese is is not good. It's a it's a signal. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. I, I talk a lot with other broadcasters in this game about signals and mm-hmm. signaling. It seems a lot of people are completely oblivious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you get it. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a small little thing I put in that gives that gives like that gives a little bit more character to the album outside of just the music. Right. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, Chinese dragons. Oh, okay. You also said at the end of this um, of grandma that she's mm-hmm. nowhere to be seen since your parents separated. Yeah, my parents are divorced. Uh, how long ago was that? Um, they, my mom told me when I was 17, but I knew their relationship has been rocky for one, like years now. So I'm not sure exactly when they like got the actual divorce, but she told me when I went, in my last year of high. Mm. Yeah. I see. Yes, uh, something was going on with the audio. I think the... Maybe it's like the noise reduction... Not noise reduction, but the cutoff. It's a little too aggressive. The noise gate. Okay. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. But there was okay. some breaking up. Okay, sorry. 
But no, it might just okay. be like yeah, it just might it just might be my internet like cutting out here and there. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Technology dude. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> next next time I'll be sure to hook up my actual mic and what can. <laughs> That'd be cool. Well, although she's nowhere to be seen, she's still alive, I hope. Yeah, she she's still alive. Like, um, yeah, you know, some people have like uh, messaged me saying like, like, is my grandma dead? Because uh, like, because apparently that's kind of like the the impression I gave on like that kind of last lyric. That's not that wasn't intended. I think I may have just like made it a little more dramatic than I intended to, mm. and that's why like people were like. Wondering, oh, is is your grandma dead? Uh, but no, she's alive. Is she still in the states, or is she back home? Yeah, she's still in the states. It's it's just that since my parents are divorced, mm -hmm. and my mom and dad don't really get get along well, uh, it's it's hard for me to to actually see my grandparents. I see. Well, yeah. What state are they living in? Oh, is she living in? Oh, uh, both, uh, both grandparents. There's, there's, oh, uh, they're still they're still in. Um, in the city, San Francisco. Oh, no shit. Yeah. So they're like yeah. they're literally right next door. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my my own um, paternal grandmother. She's out in Hawaii, and I really want to make it out to see her because she's not mm -hmm. doing so well. Right. Yeah. Time yeah. is always ticking. Right. Yeah. That's. Yeah. That's definitely a real thing. And like. I do wish I had more time to like see my grandparents, but because of work and music and just everything else, along also along with the fact that like the two sides of my family don't get along that well, you know, it's, it's just hard to find the the right time and situation to see them. I guess um, you do it as you're able to, and when you feel right. like it. Mm -hmm. right? Just knowing that the things won't always be this way. It's always in flux. Yeah. I wonder if people might have gotten confused because of uh, the track "Fatal Error." Oh, okay. That that's actually an interesting, an interesting story. Um, that track is based off a video game called Doki Doki Literature Club. <laughs> oh, that's that's really funny. Yeah. I, I know of this game, but I've never played it. <laughs> okay, it's it's a horror visual novel, um, and based and. I mean, I hope it, I hope this isn't major spoiler, but basically, uh, this girl um, falls in love with her childhood best friend and gets extremely, extremely depressive uh, because of it. Gotcha. So, so this yeah. was not this was not actually a a thing that happened to you. No. Okay. Phew. I mean, I, I wrote it in such a way that would kind of I wrote it in in the first person perspective of. Of the of the character of the the girl falling in love, um, and I would def like I definitely tried to write it in a way to where I could incorporate like like to where I myself could relate to some of these lines, but no, none of that has ever actually happened to me. Gotcha. Um, that's yeah. that's thankful because I, I thought that I had this like really sensitive thing to plot around, and now that you tell me it's from you know, it's the Doki Doki Literature Club. Right. It's like, yeah, it's, oh, phew. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that track, like, that, I think that track itself, like, is the most, it has nothing to do with the rest of the album. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, all right. It's, yeah. It, it was, I don't know, it, it, but, uh, but I, wrote, I wrote the song, I thought, I thought it sounded, I thought it sounded good, and it also added an extra layer of um it's because it sounded so different i wanted to kind of show on my debut album that i am able to like write a more slower more mellow like love song type thing right so at the, at the end of the decision i i just decided to keep it in gotcha yeah because yeah. so so i introduced my sister to it as well we were driving down to new orleans and i, I played back your album and she heard yeah. she heard the closing bit on the fatal error and was like Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> you know? and like, oh, yeah, it, it got me today too. I was just like, "Fuck, that's gonna suck." Yeah, it's yeah. 
I won't I won't spoil the game because it is actually it is actually a pretty good playthrough. It is it is one of the most unique video game experiences I've I've ever had, I must say. So I would definitely recommend giving you giving it a go, so I won't spoil it for you right now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um <laughs> <laughs> the, the next track, the next track after Fatal Error was Session of the Mind, and that was. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, I don't even know what you call this. It's kind of like an interlude. Yeah, it's a it's an instrumental. It's it's just a it's just a beat. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. This is something that I've decided that I would want to put on every single album I make. Mm -hmm. Just like one track be something that showcases my production skills. Right. Because part of um, because other 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 than the rapping thing, like I I produce all my tracks. I don't have I don't have a beat maker. I make everything myself. Hmm. So, um, so I thought to myself, I to make a track specifically to showcase like produce in case like you know some some uh, record company or whatever asks for a sample of my work, and I would have something like ready to go. I see. Yeah. Where do you go for inspiration, though? Um, in terms of like beat making, or just like in general. Um, like if you if you want to sit down and do some writing, or if you want to think reflectively, do you have a place <clears throat> that you'd prefer to be? Not really. Like, I, high school. I think I would like really write a lot. Like, I would really focus and write. Mainly because like I was bored in class or whatever, but um, nowadays I kind of just let it come to me. I don't think too hard on it. I don't. Whenever I'm at home, I really don't try to write too much. Maybe like at most an hour a day. Mm. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I mean, just right. the the whole habit of writing, I think, is important. Do you do you journal as well, or is it just is it mostly focused on writing lyrics versus? Mostly writing lyrics. Um, I have a notebook. I keep. I always keep on me. Um, if I, in case I have like a random idea in my head mm -hmm. that, that I would just that I would just jot down, it wouldn't. Need, a lot of the time, it wouldn't even be like a fully fleshed out lyric. It would just be like a line that I would definitely want to like remember and keep for myself later. Gotcha. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So one of the things that drew me to this, um, I think that on the first night I listened to your album, I got mm -hmm. as far as like halfway through 29 Sunset. Mm -hmm. The Chinese New Year, uh, listening to that one, it gave me a sense that, well, you're not, you're not asleep behind the wheel. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> there, because I feel like there, there are a lot of guys out there that are. Um, that don't seem to either are not willing to or are just oblivious to racial realities here in the mm -hmm. states. Right. Um, you're you're close to San Jose, right? Yeah, uh, San Francisco. I'm from San Francisco, which is about an hour from San Jose. Okay, so I, I have yeah. a friend who moved out here from, and his family had been living there for some time, and he. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. You say you're from Texas, right? I am. I'm from. Well, I'm coming to you here from Houston. But I was oh, okay. born actually in Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Yeah. However, I'll call Houston my American hometown. Uh. Oh, how did it, how did all of this? How did you grow? I guess get woken up. Um. Hmm. You mean like how how did I like? But what, what do you mean by that? It's a it's a weird thing. Like uh, I know this um, the idea of this word the woke, woke, woke to reality, you know, red pill blue pill type shit. Hmm. So like, how did I become like? Or at what time did you what, open your eyes to it? I wouldn't really say. Hmm. I don't think there was a specific like moment in time I'd say that like 
where like I was aware that like of my like you know Asian American status and how that affects me. Mm-hmm. I think it was just like you know just growing up and like you know just seeing noticing that people treated me a little bit differently from how other people are treated. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think the area yeah. that you were in was one of the first where uh, whites became the minority. Uh, San Francisco is definitely very uh, diverse. Like it's very ge- um, it's very diverse in terms of in terms of race. Right. Yeah. Uh, our city, the, the the districts are very. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Shit. There's like a good, there's a good healthy mix of people mm-hmm. in within San Francisco. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's. Um, I'd like to head out there sometime, take a look. But I know it's quite expensive to live there too. Oh yeah, I think we're the most. I think behind New York, we're the second most expensive city in the country right now. Yeah. It's one of those places yeah. where, you know, 20 years ago, if you bought a house, now you're a millionaire. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. Okay, so... I'm going through this again. Smoke from mm-hmm. the... Oh, there was a line in Chinese near. It was smoke from the... And then I couldn't catch the word. Cigarette. Uh, yeah, smoke from the gun or a cigarette. Gun or a cigarette. Yeah, mm-hmm. the first one, you're going to get lost in. Second one happens from... The second one habit happens from habits my parents inherit resulting in coffins. Do you personally yeah. smoke? No. Uh, that was actually a reference to... Um, well, smoke from the gun or a cigarette, the first one, young ins get lost in. So, in my first one, I was talking about, like, the guns. I was talking about how, like, younger people get involved with involved with guns. Gotcha. Yeah, and um, the second one hab, hab, the second one happens from habits our parents inherit. I was referring to my dad, because mm. he got his smoking habits from his dad. Gotcha. Yeah. Did he- resulting, yeah, resulting in coffins, I'm like, as, as you, like, can guess, smoking is a killer, so. Yeah, and, and you also yeah. have... Oh, yeah. <laughs> did he did he dissuade you from smoking? Or... Um, I, I think it was mostly my mom who, who, like, just scared the crap out of me to never smoke. Gotcha. Yeah, my... Yeah, my dad and grandpa, I mean, obviously they would... Obviously, they wouldn't, like, encourage smoking, but they never really, like, flat out, like, stopped or, like, give, gave me an indication to, like, really stop me. I see. Yeah. 420? Nah. No. I'm completely... I, I don't do anything, like... That's good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it keeps your mind sharp. Yeah. Yeah. My brother's the same way. Like, he doesn't... Mm. He doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't, yeah, I don't do anything. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's good, man. Hopefully you live a long, long, healthy yeah. life because of it. Thank you, thank you. So, don't just, uh, All right, some general questions. Um, What's up? Did you ever have game consoles when you were growing up? Oh yeah, um, I had. It was always PlayStation. Oh. My yeah, my uncle was the one who actually uh, bought me my game consoles. It wasn't my it wasn't my actual parents who. Me. Um, yeah. My uncle bought me my PS2 and PS3. Nice, lucky you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. It's always nice to have that one uncle. Oh yeah, yeah. Did, did my, you, my mom was super against it though, because she was like, she didn't even want me to like play video games, like not at all. Right. So like, yeah. I was gonna ask, did she ever put them up during the school year? Uh, I wasn't allowed to play on the week uh, on the weekdays. Right, but she wouldn't. She wouldn't like hide your game consoles or be like, no, you're absolutely. Oh, she would. She would like every every Sunday. 
every like Sunday night. This was like the saddest moment of my childhood. But she would like unplug all the cables, put it back in the box, and like put it in a closet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was depressing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny it's funny because i can identify with this too you know <laughs> just like no you can't play games you gotta yeah you gotta keep your nose to the grind so right yeah i think a lot of like asian parents well it depends because I, I i know i had some i have some asian friends who are just let them play video games all they want and they they still manage to get like straight a's right so yeah it's just uh, i would say it's different paradigms Right. Yeah. Some some people feel that okay, you have to control. Like uh, young people aren't capable of self discipline, and right. <laughs> or in order to set it up easier for them, just eliminate all the things that could possibly harm, cause them harm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. My my parents, or rather, my mom was. Um. Yeah, but I think because. Because of that, because she was like trying to shelter me more, I developed a more like rebellious, rebellious attitude. Mm. So that actually like pushed me away from like the whole get straight A's, doctor, lawyer, engineer, Harvard, Stanford route. Right. Yeah. But you you have a younger sister too, right? Yes, I have a I have a younger sister. And no no other siblings. No other siblings. Okay, so. I mean, you're the eldest. They they probably put some pressure on you because of that as well. Or your, your yeah. Mom and dad. yeah, yeah, definitely. Like the first son, yeah. every Asian family <laughs> like is always like put on a pedestal. Pretty much, you've got to yeah. be the one to lead the way. Right. Take the blows when they come in. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever have her to ever have to stand up for your little sister? Like, did she get bullied at school as well? Or does she have it easy? Um, well, we, we're actually not that close. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm actually... Yeah. I remember, like, we fought a lot. Like, we fought a lot when we were younger. Like, and I don't know. Once, once she, like, started, like, getting into her teens and whatnot, she just started, like, going out with friends more. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just wasn't ever... I never got the chance to really be like close with it. Gotcha. Yeah. What about now? Um, a little bit closer now, but not. Yeah, a little closer now, but still not quite. Not quite there. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully things get better in the new year. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Of course. Just going through my notes. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Oh, okay. The track Fire in the Hole. A little yeah. deeper. What inspired you to pick up the mic? Uh, can you repeat that? What inspired you to pick up the mic? Mm. Um, I, mean, I just remember, like, back in eighth grade, I was like... I was just writing lyrics like on a notebook and I was, I, I didn't even like consider myself a rapper then. Um, I think, yeah, I think I was just writing about like some, some crush I had or something. Right. And then like, I don't know, just somewhere along the line, like within a year or so I was like, I decided, yo, I, I, I want to be a rapper. I want to be an MC. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so back then in eighth grade or so, you, you used to listen to rap. Yeah, I, I listened to rap. Um, I started listening to rap in like sixth, seventh grade, beginning of middle school. Um, yeah, but that, the rap I listened to then, that was like much more like whatever was popular or mainstream rap at the time. So like, again, like Akon or if you even consider that rap, but that was like kind of like the the kind of like hip hop rap music that I was introduced to sure. for at first, yeah, yeah. But then I started listening to like uh, Mike Shinoda from from Lincoln Park, mm. Lupe Fiasco, uh, Nas, Eminem, 
Right. Yeah. So listen to that kind of like more lyrical, uh, more lyrical hip hop. And then that's what like started getting me into uh, thinking that yeah, maybe I could try writing lyrics. I'm glad you did. Really. Thank you. I'm sure I'm not the only one that feels that way. Oh, thank you. That's very nice of you to say so. Okay, it cost me nothing then. Like, uh, if it's something that, you know, you've been doing for so long, it, mm -hmm. it brings you joy to do it, it helps other people, mm -hmm. by all means, never quit. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. I, I think you also express thoughts to this effect, too, in your lyrics. Talking about, mm -hmm. like, a this deep drive within yourself to do it. It doesn't matter if you make it big or not. Right, yeah, that's... I was, I was just reminding... Uh, yeah, I, I, that's something I need to remind myself whenever I put something out. Like, even if, even if it gets zero views, even if no one likes it, and at, at the end of the day, like, it's something that I made. It's something that I could be proud of myself for doing. So, yeah. So, I'm never, like, disappointed when something doesn't meet, like... Like I don't, I don't get, I don't, I don't break down whenever something doesn't meet my expectation. I, like, because I know deep down, like I put an effort into it. Yeah, you gave your best. The rest is up to the world. Right. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's all you can. All you can really do is just put put in your best work and hope people like it. Right there with you, man. Yeah. Also, in fire in the hole, deeper within yeah. this, you actually. Talk about staring down at a rifle. Mm -hmm. I was curious, uh, wh where does this come from? Do you have exposure to guns or? Uh, can you repeat that back to me? Staring down at a rifle. You talked about staring down at a rifle and then one less rice bowl. Oh, okay. Um, so around the time that I like first started getting into rapping, uh, my friends, the friends that I had in middle school were starting to get involved with uh, Chinatown gangs. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, so that, I just had like the, um, I just thought of like the future and like the, the possible outcome of what would have happened if, if like I like started getting into these gangs along with my friends instead of pursuing like the ambition to be, become an MC. Gotcha. Yeah. So okay. yeah, like, yeah. Shit, I forgot exactly what I said on on, on that on that one verse, but, um, but it's pretty much me saying like, if it wasn't rap, I would probably be like doing some stupid shit and probably get myself killed. Gotcha. Gotcha. It's it's nothing to do with um, thoughts of self harm. Have you ever no, had those I've, thoughts? Yeah, I I mean, yeah. I've I've definitely had thoughts like that before, but that particular lyric uh, yeah. has, is I don't think is has anything to do with self harm. Gotcha. It's entirely yeah. separate. Okay. Yeah. I, I asked about mm -hmm. the self harm bit. I have it at the end of the notes on track the track twenty nine sunset. Mm -hmm. And specifically what I wrote is when did you first have thoughts of self harm? Oh, this was like just being bullied like the way that I was back in middle school, it make it does it really makes you really makes someone feel like shit. Oh yeah. So yeah. And yeah, just when you know, when bullies come up to you and just make them just like all gang up on you, you don't really have like and, like me myself, I'm sure I had friends, but I wouldn't say I had like a click to like mm. back me up every time like Every time, like someone wanted to like mess with me, and in, in addition to that, you know, my parents were just like cared more about my grades than they did about my about my you know mental health. Gotcha. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. What What was your middle school like? Uh. Hmm. That's a pretty general question do you think you like no well going back to 29 sunset you talked yeah. about being the sixth grade and then yeah. carrying a switchblade 
or having mm-hmm. exposure that was, to that? That was actually my friend. Uh, my friend was the one who getting into knives around. Right. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In that verse, I was actually talking about uh, my uh, a friend that I had who was same friend who was starting to get into uh, the CT game. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Was it, is it, what about demographics? Demographics at your middle school. Demographics. It was pretty. It was pretty diverse. It was pretty diverse. I would definitely say. Um, I'm trying to. There was definitely a very prevalent uh, Mexican population. Sorry, the the feed is dying. Oh, sorry. Uh, Let me turn off my camera. Let me turn off my camera and see if that helps. It might help with your bandwidth a little bit. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, in that case, we'll just go back to like video. Uh, audio, audio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <Okay. off. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, here. Oh boy. Well. Yo. Yeah. Okay. Um, I hope it's working. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yes. Yeah, you can. Yes, I can. Hey, uh, yo. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. Good. All right. So it was pretty diverse, you said. Uh, quite, quite a lot of Latinos. Yeah. Or Hispanics. Yeah, but yeah. Other than that, I wouldn't dominating race. Gotcha. Middle school. Just like just a, a tossed salad, if you will. Yeah, right. pretty much. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. All right, just going to pick some other stuff. Um, okay. Some notes. Again, you talked about bubble wrap and Hip hop would be nothing but drivel if I think you were referring to. Um, actually, I forget. <laughs> what were you referring to here? Oh. Hip hop would be nothing but drivel. This is fire in a hole. Uh, shit! I forgot my own lyrics. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Let me read and listen to that part again. This is all fire in a hole, right? Yeah, fire in a hole. Okay. Uh, that's what you broke down, right? Hip hop would be nothing but drivel. Just probably referring to like how like hip is kind of like dumbing down at it. What do you see out there that's bad? Sorry. What do you see out there that's bad? The so-called bubble. Oh yeah. Rap. Oh yeah. That, that, that's like who's who's in this group of bubble wrap bubble wrappers? Wait, bubble wrap or mumble wrappers? Bubble. You said bubble, I think it was bubble or mumble. I don't even know. It was from Dragonfire. I have written down here bubble, but I don't know that you published oh, lyrics. Oh, oh it, it's... Uh, it's like bubblegum. I most likely said mumble. I might have like said mumble too fast and it might have, it might have <laughs> like misread it. Gotcha. But yeah, like, my stuff like mumble rappers nowadays, like, they're so like low, like... Anything will. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a, yeah, any, anything will is most likely a mum. Um, who else? Well, Kodak Black. Freaking. Yeah, I, I don't know a lot of like 
person. I just hear them. I just hear the music on like the radio, right? Right. And like, uh, yeah. I just hear the music on the radio, and a lot of the time I can't really even like tell the difference between songs because like they sound so similar. Yeah, they kind of blend together. Yeah. But for you, there's this this one. There's that one guy who recently put out some video, or he did the slanty eyes thing. Okay, that was a track against Lil Pump. Oh, Lil Pump, that's him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, yeah. So Lil Pump recently released a song. Uh, he he said something about uh, yeah the basketball player. Uh, yeah, he said something about like my eyes so faded. Um, looking like Yao Ming or something like that. Oh. Right. Yeah. I know and then he did the, like, the Ching, like, ad lib and the slanted eyes and the pulling back the eyes thing uh, during his video. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I know there were some people that fired back and I saw that you, you wrote something too. Uh, where? It's like a quick social media post. Yeah. On Facebook, right? Maybe, maybe it was uh, the site I found it on was an aggregator. I only had so much time to oh. look. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I just I just posted um like yesterday I I released I released a video today, hmm. uh, but yesterday I just announced that you know I'm I'm gonna drop a diss track on this, on this guy. Oh, so you did you did follow through with that? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um. Do you have a link to that handy? Uh, to the video or th or the picture? Um, the the video or the track. Okay. Uh, one second. Yeah, I'd like to keep that keep that around. Okay. Yeah. Send it to you uh, through Discord. Sure. That'd be perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Yep. Thank you for that. I'm glad that you followed up with what you said you would do. That's uh that's reassuring. <laughs> how many how many shows now have you put on? Like not a lot. Like I've done performances here and there, and I did have a did have my own like concert slash album release party at UC Irvine back okay. in April. But otherwise, I don't do a lot of like actual live performances. Gotcha. Was it pretty well received yeah. at Irvine? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. The, the, a lot of the professors really, really like were impressed by me. Um, they invited me specifically to to kind of like um, to showcase for their international students. Mm. Um, so they had, yeah, so they had me, they had me teach a, a, a one hour workshop and then later that night I had my, had a, I had my performance. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah, so I just taught them, I just taught, I just went over the process of like what it's like to write a rhyme and like how my mind works in the process, in that, during that process. Was that an enjoyable experience for you, the teaching? Oh yeah, def definitely. Because there's not a lot of people um, that I could really share uh, my art with on like you know personal, intimate level. Um, yeah, like because well, a lot of my they're not musicians, so they don't really like they they still support me, but they just don't understand like what it's like, you know. I see. Yeah. Yeah, I know that you joined up on this um, a couple. Of, there's a Facebook group that we both joined up on, the Asian Creative uh, Network. Oh yeah, yeah. They... I tried to I tried to make a post to share this too and like talk a bit about your album, but uh -huh. for whatever reason they didn't approve it. Interesting. <laughs> I didn't. Funny. I didn't even know they like they're forcing approvals now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah. Yeah. 
but it's, it's good. I feel like it's a really good thing that we've got these, these groups, support groups, if you will, spinning up. Oh yeah, no, like, it's been great. Uh, with the exception of the dating one, I... <laughs> the dating one? <laughs> yeah, I think the dating one is an apt mess. I think, uh, yeah, from what I've seen on the dating one, a bunch of, like, really, like, just conceited 18 year old, 18 rich, rich 18 year olds who are just really conceited and are kind of just flexing for, for just big, uh, Instagram followers. Try to get the follows. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I wonder what they would do if it's they a shame. had the influence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a shame, too, because like, I it barely had like, like a thousand people. And in the beginning, it was actually like pretty, like it was it was pretty decent at like just making new friends. Forget forget the dating part, just talking to people, meeting new people. That group was actually pretty decent. Mm. But as more and more people joined, it just became a complete like shallow uh, shallow showcase. Gotcha. I think you should make a post. Wait, I mean, assuming that you you know. You want to find uh, okay. Can you repeat that? You're breaking up a little. I think you should make a post, assuming that you want to find somebody. Just like... Uh, say that one more time? Sorry. I think you should make a post. I think uh, it would be nice if you made a post. <laughs> <laughs> a couple friends wanted to write a profile for me, but nah. I think I'm good. Man, if somebody was running a profile for me, I'd be like, alright. Be my guest, man. <laughs> Just because it's one less thing I have to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just, I'm not a fan of like online dating in general. The idea is to move it into the real world as fast as you can, right? Yeah, but, um, but my, I don't know. My, you're missing out on that like initial physical, um, intimacy, which I think is actually, which I think it's like that is vitally important in not just like a romantic relationship i think it's important for like any type of relationship so and like oh because I, I have got like on um i've met someone on tinder before and like i have got date with them at the end of the day it just didn't go very good because we just weren't compatible as people got you so yeah it sounds like screening or listing Figuring out what the other person's values are ahead of a face-to-face -face meeting is kind of important. Yeah, because like, I think I think people nowadays they don't they don't see the importance of body language, just small little signals sure. that your body gives off. That is a really important thing, like in any kind of relationship, I'd say. Yeah, it's strange. Um, so I, I started going back to school, yeah. complete my MBA, uh, just this semester, uh -huh. and it's very strange how things have changed. Like now I walk oh, around yeah. and all these students have uh, like AirPods or Beats, whatever. They're they're all wearing headphones or <laughs> and earphones. It's oh, yeah. it seems like people that aren't plugged in and tuned out are in the minority. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Nowadays. Yeah, nowadays it's uh, we're in an age where it's it's deemed inappropriate and it's deemed bad to just go up to someone and say hi, which I think it's a total shame. Yeah. Be the change you want to see, yeah? <laughs> but yeah, I, def I definitely get the sentiment of like everyone has headphones in and everyone's plugged in all the time. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate because at the days, at the end of the day, uh, I, I hear this more and more. It's just like people saying, I'm lonely. Yeah. So, dude, what are yeah. you doing about it? <laughs> like if you're lonely, if you want to meet people, don't be walking around with headphones on all the time, acting like you're cool. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. It's all, yeah, it's also like, it's, it's also ironic like because people, these like same people would like, uh, they would like try to all their friends through on online, but have like no 
inner, inner world um, connectivity. I'm generalizing a bunch, but this is just like something I've noticed with a couple people I've met throughout the years. Interesting. For you, you've probably got a decently yeah. strong local network because you've been you've been in that area for so long, right? Um. Yeah, the like the yeah a decent. I have friends in both like the MC and the and the B boy communities. So, yeah, like yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I definitely. I'm I'm definitely not the type of person to like rely on my to have all my um, relationships. I see. Yeah, I mean, if you've got the scene, a scene that is strong locally, by all means. Hello? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. <clears throat> okay. Little glitch, I guess. Uh, hold on. Sorry, one more time. Signal right now. I was saying, if you have a scene that you can rely upon locally, that's that's always best. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty thankful for like the for the fact that. I think you cut out. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, are you thankful for the fact that you, you have that, I imagine? Is yeah, that I have like both a rap and a, just a general hip hop community in, in San Francisco. Yeah, so even though be like as poppin' as I wish it was, I, I, think to, I think of like, you know, places that don't even have this at all. And I am grateful for like, there is a community of hip hop, of hip hop artists around my area. All right, that's good, man. That's good. Yeah. So, so far in this time that you've been, you've been in the game, what yeah. would you say has been your biggest mistake? Like if somebody was to look at what you've done, uh, what would you caution them against doing from your experience? Um, geez. Hmm. Probably there was a time back in um, when I was still pretty new to this. That I would tell myself I would be a rapper and nothing else. Like I would only write lyrics mm -hmm. and and rap. I think that was probably um, probably the biggest downfall. Or what could be, what could have been my biggest downfall if I stuck with that mindset. Because um, I attribute a lot of my, I don't want to say success, because I don't think, I don't think like, like honestly, I don't think I'm that like successful of an artist. Like, sure, I might have like a like couple thousand like likes or followers or whatever here and there, but I don't think I'm all that successful. But Whatever success I do have, I attribute to like me being open minded to like other to other art forms and other hobbies as well. Um, yeah, to that end, yeah. I mean, it looks like you you're quite musical just in general. You had the guitars hanging on the wall, and right, um, right. yeah, I taught sure. myself. Yeah, oh, go on. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm pretty sure I saw you sitting down on a piano or a keyboard. Well. Right. Yeah, I, I taught myself a piano um, after. Well, I, I knew I knew a little bit of piano from middle school because that was something like I wanted to teach myself. But I really started to like understand piano uh, once I started getting into producing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. So yeah, I started teaching myself piano and guitar. I started like learning how to produce beats. Um, this was like when I was in the tenth grade. Wow. And the years I just like started, I kept an open mind and started acquiring 
more and more skills. And a lot of these skills wouldn't even, they wouldn't uh, directly relate to music, but they would still help me over time. Like I learned how to use Photoshop and, uh, and Adobe Premiere. And that would, that would make it so that I'm able to like edit my own videos so that I don't have to rely on someone else to whenever I wanted to get something done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But with the reach you have now, have you had people coming up to you and offering to help you with those things? Like, Hey, I, I, yeah, I have, I definitely have, but, um, they, there's a, there's a certain level of, of like, that, like if they're not as dedicated and hungry to the craft as I am with mine, then chances are that I don't really want to work with you. Right. There's a, you know, passion when you see it. Right. Right. Yeah. Like a lot of the time, like if they have, if I see someone have to wait for something to happen in order for them to like want to do something, you know, then a lot, then I probably don't want to work with them. This, this is more, this is more the case with a lot of like other rappers that came, that come up to me and ask me, Hey, you want to collab? And, and like, you want to like hop on a track together? And um, a lot of the time, I, I, I don't, I don't want to work with them because, like, I haven't, I haven't heard a single song from you. I haven't ever seen you make a track or anything. Right. And now all of a sudden, you want to like, you want to make a song, like, you know? Sounds like they uh, almost want to just write off of your coattails. Right. That's yeah. That's what it feels like uh, sometimes. So. Yeah, it's understandable. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Nowadays, uh, I have a friend. His name's Tony. Uh, he's he he's my videographer. Uh, whenever whenever I do have like a bigger project, and um, that that requires like a more well thought out music video, he would be the ones that help me. Gotcha. Yeah. That's good. Video. He's is, been uh, uh, he's been lot. doing a b boy. He's been doing like b boy videos for like ever since for, like forever. So, and and he believes in what I and I definitely believe in in his uh, work with the camera. So, so yeah, we have a very good dynamic going on. Right on. I'm glad that you have that relationship. It's an important one. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like creatives have to help each other out. Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah. So ultimately, if you aren't looking for fame or mass appeal, what's like? Who are you really trying to hit with your work? Hmm. I know you talked about wanting to hold on to it, so like future generations will be able to hear it, like your own children, I imagine. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think I just want to. I just. I think I just want to be remembered for doing something. Not to go you out know? with a whimper. Sorry. Not to go out with a whimper. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, just like give give my life some some passion and fire. Because if it wasn't for this, I pro I don't I really don't know. I really can't imagine how my life would be in this particular moment if I if I did pursue music the way I did. That's good. Yeah, that's good, man. On the final track, yeah. as the dragon sleeps, you talked a bit about mm -hmm. isolation, and also that mm -hmm. some people try to steer you away from rap. Uh, how do you feel now, mm -hmm. as far as isolation goes? You've talked about having this the benefit of a like local hip hop community. Yeah, are you are you isolated? Uh, repeat that. Are you isolated or not at all these days? Uh, repeat that again. You're breaking up. Are you isolated or not at all these days? Uh, just from like people in general or from, like, the hip hop community? Um, I or... guess just like, just, just people. Um, I'd say for like the past two months, yeah, the, the past two months I was kind of like living in my own like little sheltered box. Um, just didn't feel like going out too much. Uh, yeah, I was getting pretty distant with like with people in general. Mm. Uh, this month, I've definitely been like more more outgoing. 
That's good. But yeah. How many people tried to steer you away from rap from pursuing this? Oh, I don't think I could give you an exact number, but right. definitely like a lot of people, a lot of, of course, like, you know, the, the bullies in, in high school and whatnot would make fun of me for it. And, and, and obviously my parents, my parents don't support hip hop music at all. But even even right now, with um, the 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 success that you've had so far, they're still are they still pretty much like nah, don't do it, just give up. Um, not as much. Like now, now that I've like, uh, some high school, some friends from high school have like messaged me saying that like they're really proud of like what I'm doing and like how far I've gotten from from how they they they've seen me when I was just starting. And like to see that I have hundreds and thousands of views on some of my videos, and like they tell me that they're like they're proud of what I'm doing. So that stuff, I the hate the hatred and dissuasion has definitely died down. That's good, man. But with with anyone doing anything like passionate, there will always be like some people out there that just don't want you to do it. I think I think that's just an inevitable thing. I don't th- I don't think I'm special in that regard. I think that's just how it is. People wanting you to take the safe path as opposed to putting yourself out there too much. Right. Right. Fair. So what's next for you? Um. Right now, I'm actually working on the second album. Oh shit. Yeah. I'm taking I'm taking my time with one a little more. Um, as, as proud as I am of, of the first one, there are a good amount of mistakes that I wish, uh, that I wish I'd spent more time on to like kind of tone a little before I released it. Mm-hmm. So with this one, I'm really like just taking my time with it. Uh, I'm planning to like still do like, uh, videos online to post on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram and, and the likes just to, you know, get my name out and then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, would you talk a little more about the mistakes that you felt you made with the first one? Okay. Uh, let's see. So one one mistake that uh, one mistake that I really caught myself for, and this is more on the technical side, mm-hmm. but I wish I mixed the album a little better in terms of like uh, bubbles and volumes and you know the the science side of it. Okay. Yeah, some tracks I felt like were just too, like, because I, I, I listened to my album on multiple speakers, some on, like, on desktop speakers, on headphones, on some cars. Right. And, yeah, and the sign of a good mix is so that your mix sounds good, or at least sounds decent on most setups. Mm-hmm. On some setups, like, my lyrics were not not like listenable at all you couldn't hear my lyrics it was only the beat mm. and on other setups um some of the bass was too was too heavy Th- this on on fire in a hole definitely fire in a hole was probably the worst uh mixed track but again you did all of this by yourself right yeah i did all of this by myself Over- so yeah like there are, like i am proud of myself we're like or like considering that I don't have a two hundred thousand dollar studio in all this at home, mm-hmm. I am proud of myself for what I did. But at the same time, wish that like I just spent a tiny bit more time perfecting all all the small little things. Yeah, it's, yeah. you know you know how it goes though. It's like the perfectionism is the enemy of just getting shit done. Right. Sometimes you just gotta let right. this drop. Yeah, but there is a there is a balance, so I'd say like you definitely you definitely don't want to waste all your time on a project, but at the same time you definitely want to put a, put effort in it so that you'll look back on it and and like be proud of it. Gotcha. So yeah, I imagine this this next one, your second album, you'll you'll have all those those things kink those kinks kind of sorted out. Yeah, um, yeah, like I'm definitely. Right now, I'm mostly in the beat production process of 
making the albums. I'm not writing so many lyrics yet, mostly mm-hmm. just making the beats. Um, but yeah, I'm like paying attention to to a bunch of um, to the levels and how each sound interacts with the next. Very cool. Yeah, thank you. Now the first one, uh, if you had to give a rough estimate. Like how long did it take in total? The number of man um, hours that you invested inside of your first album? I'd say it took me eight months. Yeah, roughly eight months. Eight months. During which time, uh, I imagine quite a bit of your free time was going towards this. Uh, if not recording, then just playing with sound. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the thing with this album was that I, I had a I had a pretty concrete idea on what I wanted it to be about. Um, I wanted it to be about you know my experiences as an Asian American growing up in you know in America. Mm-hmm. So because I had that idea ready, like really formulated in my mind, really planned out, I there weren't that many tracks that I needed to cut out, like. I, I think for this album I produced, I made a total of like 16 to 18 songs and the final cut was like, was 12 songs. So I only had to cut out like six tracks. I see. I mean, yeah. you're on one hand it's like only six, but uh, on the other hand it's a whole third of the work that you put in, nobody ends up listening to on the album or being able to hear on the album. Right. Well. Yeah, um, yeah, that. But that is like kind of uh, the science behind making a making a good album. You gotta like cut out what parts aren't needed. Yeah, you can and some parts. It. Yeah, and some some of the tracks just weren't as strong mm-hmm. as others, or they were, or like one track and another track were pretty much talking about the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes sense. It's. To, to me, it's fascinating. I, you know, I really haven't been able to like sit down and look at the process. Uh, like most consumers, what I get is whatever the radio plays, or if right. I really feel like it, the entire album that somebody releases. Oh yeah, yeah, I did, yeah, I definitely feel you on that too. Because just, just, just as like a consumer myself, I do notice that like uh, that people are. Generally, once when an album is released, people are 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 going to go towards one or two songs. If they're lucky, maybe three album, and the rest is kind of like filler. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, but there are people out there who listen to whole albums through and through. So you so like I keep that in mind. So I definitely like put in the effort to make an album instead of just a compilation of songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess I'm one of those guys then. That's cool. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you. If there's anything I could help you with, what do you think it would be? Uh, say that again? If there's anything I could help you with. Uh, one more time, you're breaking up. If there's anything I could help you with, what would it be? What you could help me with? Yeah. I want to make myself uh-huh. useful. Uh, <laughs> that's like uh, I mean, I definitely enjoy this this uh, this talk or this slash interview or whatever you want to call it. I definitely like got my mind racing. It, it it's like a self reflective, um, maybe self reflect on like how I think. So if you could, if you could have me on your then that'd be that'd be pretty awesome actually. Okay. Yeah. Can do. I'll also send you along some other stuff. Uh, there's a little okay. thing that I've been working on. Okay. It's a goal. I want to I want to help some people with money. That's not to say I want to just donate a lot of money to people because I'm not a rich man. Right. <laughs> but especially artists and creatives. Like huh. we're all business people at the end of right. the day. Yeah. It's a personal business. Oh yeah, definitely. To, um, because I'm because I'm still a relatively new artist, I try not to worry about the money too much right now. For sure. Yeah, I worry. 
I worry more about um, getting a stable fan base first, and then now uh, absolutely, yeah, and then the money will naturally come from there. Indeed, and it's not talking about the income really. It's just um, what I what I would like to teach people is a combination of smart consumption yeah. and just good habits around money in general. Yeah, as right. well as some game gamification of it. Right. I can send you along some of this stuff. Just as like light pleasure reading, I suppose. Maybe you haven't seen it before, maybe you have. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's been a lot of fun. I don't know if you have any questions or any last parting words. Uh, no, not, nothing I can really think of it. Fair. Well, All right. we'll be in touch, man. Appreciate your time tonight. Yeah, yeah, thank you for having me. Of course, my pleasure. I'm glad that you made time. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you. Okay, so until next time, mm -hmm. I wish you all the best, man. Yep.